talk a little bit about binder design. So kind of the first step in this sort of diffusion MPNN alpha-fold pipeline that has become more common the past couple of years is RF diffusion. Um, so I wanted to talk a little bit about the specifics of how you design binders with diffusion and maybe we'll get into some of the um, quirks that, uh, during the activity and we can talk more um, then. So the contigs that we want to use for diffusion essentially tell the program which parts of your input PDB diffusion should take into account and then which parts you actually want to diffuse. So when you specify a chain with a letter, um, that means that you want that part of the chain to be fixed. And then when you don't specify a letter, that means diffuse this part for me. And then the slash zero is gonna be a chain break. So what we're asking for it to do here is take residues one through 100 of your input target protein and then diffuse a, another protein. Um, there is a um, conditioned version of RF diffusion that's been trained to sort of hit hotspot residues with the diffused protein when you um, specify those. And so we're going to be using that. We'll actually be comparing the two models. But most of the time when you're doing binder design, we are going to want to use hotspots so that it's not putting your binders all over the target protein and kind of just putting it in the place that you want. Yeah, so when I pick hotspots, Usually you know which interface you want to target. Um, I'll look at the interface and usually pick a more hydrophobic residue on that interface that's more central to the interface. Yeah. The number of hotspots that you specify can also change the outputs drastically. So I would try when you're going through this process, one hotspot, two hotspots, three hotspots. Sometimes when you give it three hotspots, It'll try to hit all of them, but the structures that it gives you will just be like one long helix. So then maybe scale it back and see if maybe that's asking too much of it. Um, yeah, make sure to select a target site that has a few hydrophobics. Yeah, so you definitely want that balance in there. Um, the reason that I included that is because it is, or we still find it hard to get good success rates with interfaces that don't have any hydrophobic residues. So like, I would select an interface that has like two to three hydrophobics. Um, so you don't have too many hydrophobics, but there is that like little bit of packing. Yeah. Okay. And then um, you definitely want to crop your target protein as much as possible for the diffusion part of this pipeline. Because when diffusion um, is diffusing, when it holds your residues fixed in place, it scales with O of n square, so um, exponentially with every residue that you include, um, inclu increases the computational time. So crop it to just your interface for this part, and then when you do protein MPNN or, um, actually even for protein MPNN, you don't need to use the full target, but for the alpha fold refolding step, you can bring back in the full target at that point. And then for filtering, we usually, in our lab, look at radius of gyration. So um, this is essentially a metric that tells you how globular a protein is. And we usually just use this to filter out the long helices outputs that diffusion, um, binder diffusion always gives us. And then finally, secondary structure. So sometimes diffusion will just give me like a loopy mess for a binder. And so just to filter some of those designs out, we use a secondary structure filter. Okay, so for the protein MPNN step, you want to keep your target protein fixed. Obviously, you only want to redesign the binder. Um, I like to try it with the lowest temperature first and see how much diversity it gives me. If that isn't enough, I'll bump up the temperature by 0.1. So um, try starting with the lowest possible temperature and then turning it up by 0.1 at a time. Um, the higher your temperature goes, so what we're saying with the temperature argument is that um, you can be a little bit more lenient with how you're sampling the probability distribution. So if you use the lowest possible temperature, it'll likely give you the amino acid in the probability distribution that is the highest, has the highest probability. But if you want to sample sort of a few alternate um, amino acids at that position, then you're going to want to turn up the temperature a little bit and see what other options are there. Um, people usually tend to generate three to five um, 
MPNN sequences for a diffusion backbone and then refold all of these or you can filter them based on the MPNN scores. Um, I tend to refold all of them because I've found that the MPNN scores don't necessarily tell me whether the sequence is actually good or not. So yeah, keep that in mind. And then for the refolding step, um, you want to include most of your target protein here. Um, and you can speed up the sort of high throughput alpha fold predictions by running alpha fold on your target protein before you do this step and figuring out what the minimal sort of set of inputs you need to get the target protein folded is. And so you can like generate an MSA, figure out if you give it two templates, will it fold the target protein correctly? And then when you're going into the high throughput step, you kind of want to use just those minimal inputs so you can sort of automate that process faster. And then for filtering, um, once you have generated sequences and refolded them, um, we tend to use these three metrics. So PLDDT is the um, per residue confidence from AlphaFold. Um, we want to see how close the AlphaFold prediction is to the original diffused backbone. Um, and then the PAE of the interface, which we'll talk more about in the activity. Cool. And then what happens if you go through this whole process and you don't come out with anything that AlphaFold thinks is good? So this is kind of when you need to start optimizing. Um, and there are a couple of ways to do the optimization. Uh, partial diffusion is one of them. So partial diffusion, essentially you're taking um, something that has been diffused, noising it a little bit to maybe like 10 steps, um, and then denoising it again. And so this kind of gives you a uh, few different poses of your um, target protein or your binder. And this can help MPNN sort of, you're kind of showing it the same problem in a few different ways so that it can generate the best sequences that it can. And this can sometimes um, vastly improve your confidences. And then the other one is iterative optimization. So here I'm showing a protein that Matt has iteratively optimized. Um, essentially what you want to do here is take the predictions from your AlphaFold2 high throughput run, um, get the best few, and then run MPNN on them again, and then refold, run MPNN on the best ones from that pool, refold, and kind of keep doing this until you have something that AlphaFold is pretty confident with. 